Hey, hey guys, what's up? It's JP here, and I apologize for the rough starting here. Um, so, uh, I'm back with another video. Uh, this time, I'll be doing the Shadowverse uh, Darkness Evolve uh, card review. Uh, and I'll do, for every card game I play, I, I do this review thing. So, um, if you guys are not used to it, I apologize. But if you guys wanted to hear my take on it, uh, just keep watching. Uh, I'll try to keep it a bit shorter here, but I will. It's probably gonna go over an hour, so hold on to your butts, right? All right, so this is from the off official Shadowverse website. I'm not, I'm not gonna trust any other links. I know Reddit has the whole bunch and uh, some other Japanese websites. Um, but until I get the English translation from the extra Shadowverse, I'm just it's only safer for me to to do this. So if you hear the Shadowcraft music, I do have the game running in the background here. It's just so that uh, you guys can take a look here. All right, so we're gonna start off with Christelia Teal. Which is the first craft legendary, so one five cost one one. Pen pen summon a Crystalia Eve if if it ward and involve it if at least two other cards were played this turn. So I've seen this card, the uh Christina Eve is this one, it's a six uh, or rather a four cost four four, it goes into six six. So if you play two other cards, this becomes a ward and a six six, which can attack a minion, which is pretty insane, right? Um so you might you might be thinking this card is like pretty good, uh, like I did initially. Then I realized, um, what are you really playing in constructed here? You know what I mean? Um, you're not you're playing Plagatory. Don't don't pretend you're not right. Especially if you're playing Alpha. So let's see if it makes it bigger here. Yeah, it's nicer. Okay, this is probably better. All right. So anyways, you're probably playing Forest Craft, and do you really think this card is better than, uh, like? Do you really think this card is better than? Four cost uh, card, which is the uh, let me just pull it up here so that you guys can have some comparison. Like, is that card really better than the ones that gives you the two fairies? Right? Uh, what's it called? I think it's this one, right? The Elven Princess. Yeah, is this is that better than this? Not really, not in, the, in that archetype, definitely not. Um, is it better than I don't know. What else do you play? Ancient Elf? Probably not, right? Because this fills your hand. That's what you want in that deck. So uh, I think this card is deceptive in its appearance. It's in pretty insane. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but probably just not constructed. It's probably a really good take two pick. Uh, you definitely pick this and take two over, say, maybe Ancient Elf. Let me see what legendaries there are here. Uh, this is like comparable to one of these two. Like the other two, like this is by far the worst in take two, right? Because you don't want to lose the initiative on the board. Uh, this one just gives you a whole bunch of carries, which is basically how you win as for, uh, forest craft. And this one just basically breaks the game. Oh, I did not know you can do that. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, this basically break, breaks the game in uh, like it's not even funny in uh, take two if that happens to you. So yeah, is this this is probably on par with the other legendary. So this probably to even out the uh, legendary scale and take two for the forest craft. But other than that, I don't think it's uh it's, it's definitely going to see play in constructed unless a new archetype like combo uh, forest craft actually takes off, which I don't foresee it. But I could be wrong. All right, next we have the elf knight Cynthia, six cost five six. Whenever you uh evolves the six seven, whenever you Whenever another ally follow attacks, give it plus one plus zero. So it basically buffs it, evolves on to fairies, and then you know it does that. It retains its main ability. So this card is actually again like another take two card. Like it's a huge body. Like this is probably one of the bigger bodies you can get for this uh, for this uh, craft here. Let me just look here. It also five or six costs. Uh, six cards. Okay, let's look at the six cards cards here. Okay, so it's a five six. So it's probably one of the bigger bodies by the looks of it. Yeah, so it's a pretty big body here, uh, which is pretty important to have. I think this card, this craft, even though it goes against its archetype, does need one or two big bodies, and this one fills that room pretty nicely. Uh, it's a really powerful take to pick, definitely, but um, 
probably not as good again in constructed. Um, don't get me wrong, it does have really good synergies with things like H and L. Uh, but that's about it, right? Well, I guess it could synergize with uh, rhinoceros as well, but the rhino beetle thing. But overall, I think it's just a pretty bad card. Um, except you take two ways, insane, probably a top pick. Alright, moving on, we have Vault King of the Elves. Why is King of the Elves a silver? It's beyond me, but whatever. 7 cost 5, 5, alright, so I'm just going to make this really clear. I hate this baseline, right? This is not the only card uh, at 7 that has this baseline, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I've rented about this so many times on stream. Here we go. Uh, Glacial Dragon, that's one. What else? Oh, this is even smaller. Uh, we have this one, we have this one, the Curate. Alright, I, I get it that it's like they have insane abilities, those cards at the very least, but this one's generally they don't, and it's like really upsetting to see this baseline. Anyways, moving on. Uh, enough of the rant, right? Uh, fan pair put two fairies in your hand and change the cost to zero. The question is whether you play this in Plagatory. On paper, it looks like something you would, because you probably hold this until you hit seven and then you play and then get two fairies. So it's always going to give you a bigger hand than you uh, initially started that turn with. It also works well with. Uh, it's big. It's just small enough to combo on turn 10 with an engine elf or the rhinoceros if you rhino bill or whatever it's called i, I can never pronounce that name and we just I, i'll show you the card so that you guys if you guys have no idea what i'm ranting about uh i just seem like i'm uh, jibber jabbering here is it three cards it's two cards right yeah it's a two cards my apologies see. it's the golden one right yeah, there it is. This guy, the Rhinoceros, Roach, right? Um, so this guy actually has pretty okay synergy with that. But having said that, though, I I just don't like this baseline. I think it's terrible in uh in a take two as really if it's bad in take two, it's probably not good enough in uh constructed as well so the baseline is disappointing like some of you guys on personal might be like troll -la 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 -la. it's dr boom right two one one seven 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 but no no it's not right dr boom is insane like at least he has the boom boss to do something this guy just does nothing so i think it's a bad card you won't you this one is a bad card you won't see it in like constructed or take two unless you really had no choice in take two all right right power then Three cost, um, three two commander. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, I do believe that's not enough commanders. It seems like a weird thing to say, but if you play uh, enough take two, you probably realize that I'm I'm not too far off from uh, being accurate there. Right. So yes, ward evolve ability. Summon a shield guardian for each enemy follower in play. So what is this shield guardian here? Let me. They should have it here somewhere. Alright, there we go. Shoe Guardian. 1-1 one, one Ward, okay. Okay. Okay, I get that. Alright, so in that sense, this card is actually pretty okay. Um, I do believe that... Like, on paper, it doesn't look really powerful, but I believe that this card was only meant to fix one problem which is in the mirror matchup because in the mirror matchup whoever goes first is in like such a huge advantage because they just they always have initiative right whether it be on the board or attacking phase so this guy actually helps with that situation where if you're behind you can actually just catch up on the board and then they have to start trading into creatures if they're going in phase uh, which is where I see this card being really powerful it's not going to be strong in any other matchup, I think, which kind of hinders this card's power quite a bit. Um, maybe the only other class that can flood the board to uh, even like pace with swordcraft would be like fairy, like forestcraft or shadowcraft. But those are generally like, 
pretty okay matchup for this anyways. Uh, like for Swordcraft, so I think this guy is actually okay. It's not great. Uh, again, this looks more of a take two, like trying to address the issue of uh, take two Swordcraft being too weak again, even against itself going second. So yeah, I really like this card. I think it's pretty good. Probably see play. It's probably good enough to see play in both constructed and uh, take two. I mean, you definitely take that in take two. It's just what else you is going with it, right? Um, if it's really bad, then you don't take that. But also, it'd be good enough. All right next, we have the Koga Kanuchi. Kanuchi. Seven three three. Wow. If I was ranting about the five five, oh god, it <laughs> evolves into the five five. Okay, so you know what? I'm not gonna go into that rant. Okay. Ambush. Fan fan summon another one. Okay. 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 You know what? This is not as bad as it looks, right? Uh, I know I've ranted about the five five, but this is like ten k six six over two bodies, so I like it. I don't think it's great. Uh, this seems like a cheap alternative uh, card for like new players. Um, it's not really a take two card as well. I don't think it's really powerful in take two. I think it's alright in take two. It's like not top tier, probably like B tier. As opposed to S or A, but I think it's pretty. It's, it's probably good enough. I might be underrating this card. It could be like insane, but I I just it just seems too understated to be insane. Good, possibly, but probably not insane. All right, next we have the fearless banneret. I have no idea what the banneret is. I was in the army, so I should know this, but I don't. I guess this guy who carries the banner. I did. I didn't know they were called bannerets, right? Anyways. 2 cost 2 1, that's alright. Whenever another follower evolves, summon a knight. Knight's the 1 1. Uh, as I will show you here, if you guys are not familiar for whatever reason. Uh, pretty good at 2 cost, yeah. Let's go 2 cost Swordcraft here. So that's actually quite a handful of uh, 2 cost cards here. Um, in terms of stat wise, it's close to the Kanuchi trainee uh, or the Fencer here. Let's just see whether it's a uh, Officer, no, wait, it's an officer, not a commander. That last one was a command officer as well. Yeah, I expected, anyways. Uh, for an officer, I don't know, I don't think it's that great actually. Because if you look at the two drops here, they have some pretty good. Like, the only one that I think it's probably like even Ulfless Knight, I think is better than it. And this doesn't even see play all the time. Like it does in some more aggressive version in take two, especially if you see. Um, so the question is whether you see that over this. I don't think you do. Um, this is okay. You don't need to have insane cards all the time for. And I think this is just bad card. Like it's an average. Like in a vacuum, it seems really powerful. But if you realize how the meta works in both take two and constructed, like this, this is just not great. So. Probably won't see any play. Alright, next we have the Oracle Pascal. This is a really curious name. Let me minimize this and move this over here. So we have the Oracle Pascal, which is um, the 5 cost for 5, turns into a 6 7 here. 6 7 Earthright ability at the end of this turn. Double all other allied followers attack and defend, so it basically doubles the size of all your creatures. Now initially I read this as only uh, um, like attack, so I thought it was pretty bad. So if because it basically doubles the size of all your creatures, it's actually not as bad as you think. Again, this I believe it was meant to address um, the take two situation where uh, Runecraft is underrepresented. I personally think that Runecraft is one of the top tier decks. Like, to me, I would rather take Moonclaw over Swordcraft. I'm not sure if, if it's because of my luck, um, but I just don't get consistently... Like, I don't get very consistent cards in, in Take 2, which should be the case, um, based on the drafting system. So, like, it's very hard for me to get a good Swordcraft deck, but it's pretty okay for me to get a good Moonclaw deck, because all the cards are there generally good enough, right? Uh... This card is obviously, <laughs> again, one of those cards that uh, are meant for take twos. Like, it doesn't fit in any 
current archetype of a uh, Shadowcraft, uh, or rather Moonraft deck, except when you construct it. Um, you could argue like the Earthright version might run this, to which I would just argue like, sure, but what are you really buffing in that deck? Like Guardian Golems, which is the 3-3 three, three ward? It is. Sure, they become 6-6, six, six, but how many of those are you going to have on the board to evolve? Right, if you can pull off that ten ten combo with the uh, workshop and whatnot, okay, then that's fair. But I don't know it just feels like this card itself is really powerful in the vacuum, but in both cases, like or rather in the constructed scene, this is not what he play. Just because it doesn't synergize well with early existing decks. Having said that, though, in take two, this card is pretty ridiculous. I don't see why you ever not take this card. It's definitely a top tier legendary in my opinion. Let me just pull over this guy, this little guy over here. And we look at the legendaries for the class. Don't get me wrong, like this guy is the most broke one of the best legendaries in Take Two, but uh, you don't know which get him. Myth of a Golem is eh it's stupid. And Merlin is just horrible, so yeah. We definitely uh pick this as a top tier Minecraft. Uh, pick. Oh, why did I close that actually? Alright, here we go. Mind win. 5 cost spell. Return enemy follow with 1 defense or less to the opponent's hand and summon 8. And summon 1 snowman spell boost. Follows with 1 or more defense can be returned and summon 1 more snowman. So it doesn't say. Uh, follows with 1 more defense. Can be. I'm guessing what this means is that from 1. Uh, you spell boost it, it becomes like 2, and then it becomes 3, and it becomes 4, and 5, right? So the defense range goes up, and it summons exponentially more snowman. So I think this card is good. If it's a destroy or banish, sure, it's good, right? But returning, how good is returning here? This is not really a class that plays on tempo, even in arena, like take 2, because like, Sure, take two is about tempo, but you don't play it as a tempo deck, right? The closest thing you play it to in arena is to compare it to like Hearthstone. Um, it's like playing tempo mage, right? So I guess in a sense, yeah, sure, it's like tempo mage, but this is like an insane card in a vacuum again. I don't know if this five cost is. It's because it costs five, right? That I'm like really iffy. I get the ability to be really powerful, but I don't. At what point is this returning a follower and summoning a snowman? How many snowmen is worth five costs? I really don't know. Um, I'm guessing if you can get all five snowmen on the board and return a five defense, sure. Fair enough, right? So basically, I have to spell lose it five times. It's viable, it's not great. So I think this probably won't see play in either constructed nor uh why are you closing uh, uh I'll take two. Alright. Remy and Remy. Witchy duo. I don't see a second witch in here, do you? Anyways, uh forecast three four average stats of right summon a guardian golem. This card is freaking broken. Uh, this is probably the most insane of all the insane four drops, which is saying a lot, right? But I think it immediately becomes the best four drop in this class. Uh, if I'm talking strictly on non legendaries, right? Merlin is probably just better in constructed because you can synergize your deck. Uh, it's actually on par with this queen map, which is pretty insane. Queen map is already like. A huge overstated minion. Uh, this one's just a little bit less uh, bigger than it, but it has a much more powerful ability. If you really count stat for stat, uh, if you can get the earth right off this guy, this guy is going to be put much more value, right? And it, it, it just yes, it's two cards for the price of one. You sure you get rid of your earth sigil, but um, that's a good thing. Um, one of the problems that I encounter in take two is that I just can't get enough cards to trigger the prop play of sigil. So I have like a whole bunch of old sigils and I just lose, right? Um, and this actually is a really good four drop that uh, synergizes with old sigil. 
So I really like this card. I think it's one better cards in take two, especially. Um, I don't think it's great in constructed unless a Sifo decks become a thing, like more of a thing. I can say that though. Um, this is probably one of the best cards I've seen in this set, which is saying a lot. Which both three cards are uh, rare, uh, rather bronze variety, so pretty easy to get. We follow the animation and we follow draw a card if any of our followers in play. That is pretty powerful, isn't it? That looks like it's really powerful. Let me just verify that by looking here again. We're gonna put it for three cards, take out four cards. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Now I get it. All right, so this ability is actually really, really insanely powerful. But it's competing with like some pretty good cards here. Because do you take that over Snowman? Maybe not. Do you take that over Petrification? Maybe not. Sorcerer Sanctuary? Maybe not. First Kills? Maybe not. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even in constructed, right? Do you take that over God, uh, Gauntleted Healer? Probably not. So, uh, it's a really powerful card in a slot that has a lot of powerful cards. I personally think that it's better than it is subjectively better than maybe half of these cards. Like it's better than the, than the minions, in my opinion. It's better than the Earth Sigil. But in terms of the actual spells, I don't think it's better. So I'm not sure if it's C play. I think it's just good enough to that it will. Uh, because cycling a card and getting such a powerful ability on three is pretty nuts. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really powerful card. You definitely take this in a take two. Uh, in constructor, I think it's it's just going to be good enough. So I think you will C play. All right, so let's uh, move on to dragon craft. Let me close this. Put up dragon craft here. Uh, dragon craft. All right. All right. So here we go. Seven cost five five or oh, card. I'm not gonna rent anymore. Okay. Uh, ward. Fan fans. I want a megalor megalor card. Megalor card. Uh, why I want to close you? Okay. Megalor card is this guy. Two two becomes four four. No abilities. Okay. I don't know, unless a uh, Mega Low card is like a vanilla card that you can draft or like uh, put in your deck. I don't think this card is great because I have not seen any other ability currently. I, I mean, I've seen like some fake cards or some real cards that actually have this text about Mega Low cards. But, anyways, if those cards are not real, assuming just looking. Oh god, I apologize for that. Yeah. Uh, this thing is uh, really loud here. Yeah. Anyways. Just in a vacuum, I assume that this is the only card that spawns the Mega Low card. I think this card is average. So it, it's not going to see playing Constructor. I'm sorry, it's just not. Um, unless, like, those are, you can synergize, right? Um, having said that, though, even then, in what situation is Mega Low card good enough? Uh, Mega Low card vanilla is good enough, make no mistake. 2 2 for 2 is just average. Uh, no abilities is a downside, but it's okay. Uh, and then this guy just buffs all the mega lockers um, on turn 7 after you evolve it. I don't think it's good, so probably not going to see play in either constructed or take 2. Like, like the thing about take 2 that before you guys like get all on my back and like, oh, it's pretty good here in take 2. Uh, actually, it's not. I'm going to show you why here. That was a 7 cost 5-5, five, five, right? That's why I was like giving that look. Uh, here we go. Yeah, 7 cost 5-5. Five, five. So let's go to 7 cost, right? You have conflagration. Like, even Hydra is better because it's a 7 cost. Like, it evolves to a 7-7 seven, seven that can trade twice, right? You have Shenlong. You have Glacial Dragon that's actually not terrible in take 2. Skull Dragon is such a monster because it's such a huge body. And Dread Dragon is like arguably one of the best cards in uh, this class for uh, Arena. So it's a, it has arguably the weakest ability amongst those cards. And it's like taking up a gold spot. 
you know what I mean? So I guess if you like so happens to see it in a gold spot, even then do you pick it over Hydra? I don't think so. Let's just be fair to it and say all gold cards here. Alright, okay, now that I'm looking at it, if it's just all gold, it's better than It's better, it's better than a scholar, that's for sure. It's probably better in take two than uh, ship shift, ship shift, uh, shape shifting mage. It's better death miss dragon. But that's about it, right? So it's actually less than half of the cards. So it's just average at best. So that's why I think you won't see it in take two. Moving on, we have the noxious dragon. Four cost for three. He was the 6-5, so it's a really aggressive standard creature. Whenever you discard a card from your hand, do you want damage to all other forests? Whenever you discard a card from your hand, do you... Alright, so it retains its uh, AOE type ability, right? <coughs> so the question now is how often are you actually discarding cards here? <coughs> you have one in, in, this, in this guy, this, this color. Emissary, so it seems like mostly it's going to be like an end of turn here. Uh, this one discards, this one discards as well, right? Discard, yeah. You have to make sure that the tax is correct as well. So I'm going to assume, uh, it's safer not to assume that uh, if the card is being destroyed from your hand, it's considered a discard. Um, Alright, so it doesn't seem like there's way too many of these abilities here. Uh, Shenlong gives you a double discard, right? Yeah. Alright, so there's, there's a few cards that can synergize with this uh, naturally, uh, in, especially in terms of class specific. So uh, the ability itself is powerful if you can keep proccing it. So this might see play actually in constructed, in Satan style decks, right? Where you're basically cycling into Satan, uh, or rather, it's called Prince of Darkness now. Okay, my bad. Anyways, where you're basically cycling towards that, this card is pretty insane because it. Or not only cycles help. This card may not that do the cycling itself, but when you cycle, it basically sweeps the board, right? Which is, um, the the one deck that, has, uh, Prince of Darkness style, uh, ramp style, uh, when it comes to discarding. Uh, Dragon Craft struggles against is basically Swordcraft, right? That you you just never win against that most of the time, like maybe like. It's probably his favorite, like 80% of Swordcraft. And this actually helps quite a bit. Like, this kind of sweeping ability. That's why you run the uh, other weird cards in there. What's it called? The uh, gold ones. Yeah, the Death Maze, right? That's the only reason this is play in that deck, right? It's, it's just because it helps you uh, deal with that. So, I think this guy is pretty okay. Don't look down on it. it probably, it's probably just good enough to see play. Uh, this, again, this is probably not as good as uh, Dragon Mori, but it's on a similar power level, if you ask me. Really good card. Probably see playing both. Sirid win. Okay, you guys who have been watching me on stream will know how I feel about this card. And I'm just going to say it. My opinion has not changed. This card is freaking broken. Like, how does this even make sense? Right? Evolve, right? It's, okay, it's a 5 cost 5 4. Which is, I believe. I'm just going to verify this now. Like I did not verify it on stream, uh, but I'm just going to do it now. Okay, so there are no gold cards in this. So let's this is a shadow craft. Okay, five drops. So that was a five four. This is a four five. This is a four four. So it's pretty. It's a pretty decent body. Here, okay, sure it evolves into its own like typical base stat line, but it. Summons one of the highest cost followers that has been destroyed this match. Like, how is that even? How is that? How is that fair? You don't buff it, so it's fair. Is it? Like, let's okay. Ignore the Batman for a while, right? Which is I know hard to do, but we're looking at Shadowcraft, right? What are the late game cards that you run here? Mordecai. And Pluto. So Pluto's a shitty card to get back, right? Unless there's some uh fanfare. Does it say something? When you play this card, so it's not it's not necessarily when you uh play so Pluto was a bad one, but 
if you play Mordecai, if you play Soul Grinder for whatever reason, this card is insane. Now the other late game cards that you run in this in a Voodoo Craft, or rather Shadow Craft, I believe would be like Lucifer. Um and that's about it. So basically it's resurrect Mordecai ninety percent of the time. Is that a bad thing? No. Hell no. Right? I mean, you really can do really broken stuff with the Uru reborn Mordecai, it doubles the Mordecai, and now you reborn it. Like, you, 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 you already had enough base to get a whole bunch of Mordecais on the board. It makes no sense to have even more ways to do it. So this guy is just broken. You definitely pick this all the time. Now, the only time you don't take this is in take two. And Mordecai is against it because Mordecai is still better than this because Mordecai is the most broken card in Take Two. There's just just no denying that. Um, so yeah, insane card. Rise of the Dead. Now this is an equally insane card because I understand. Look, look. I know it says randomly add one of the highest cost followers that's been destroyed during this match to your hand. Mordecai is the biggest card you could have. We're gonna lose here. Now here's the thing, alright? You might be like, oh, it's a turn ten play to summon Mordecai. So what? Which Mordecai, if it costs ten, is still broken. Mordecai is not broken because of uh, the five five body, you know. It's broken because of its ability. So you would pay ten uh and you would pay ten ten play points for this easily. Now here's the here's the kicker, right? I mentioned that the other card, the Seridwin, this one, is not good with Pluto. This card is insane with Pluto, right? You Pluto, it dies. And then, well, you play Rise of the Dead, and then you Pluto again. So those of you who don't know Pluto, Pluto is seeing more play now. Fan Fan Destroy Enemy Follower and its attack. Uh, it's got really nice art. Why would you take it for that? It even evolves into like something pretty cool, right? Uh, yeah, so it's like, it's like, this card is better with Pluto, which makes no sense to me. Um, again, another just, on paper, there's a really broken card. You definitely take this. Uh, in take two, like, any chance you can take a card like this, I think you should take it. Uh, it's probably not as good in take two as it is in Constructed, which is a rare thing to say for this set, but, um, yeah. Pretty good card. Sorry about that. I, I, I just needed to attend to something here. Alright, Death Chaser 3 costs 2 3. Um, whenever another follower evolves, gains 2 shadows. That's a good card. You definitely take this to take 2. Is it good enough to play in um, Constructed? Is the question. And uh, I think the answer is no. So it's just a really good take 2 card. Don't get me wrong, like if you're a newer player and you don't have. Uh, like all the cards, you, that's that's good enough to take, right? Because it's good enough of a body here. Um, but it just seems that Spartoi is just outright better. You definitely you definitely want a more aggressive stat line for early game, so that you can trade up. Uh, later game, you just want a more defense, right? So that you can keep trading, uh, trading down rather. All right, so yeah, pretty good card, I think. It's just one of the better picks, especially in Take Two. Um, in Constructor, I think it's just just not good enough. All right, Bloody Mary, uh, the new card uh, in contention for least dressed in the whole of Shadowverse. <laughs> uh, four plus four five, that's big enough. Six seven, big enough. Even more sexier, good enough. Uh, evolve, unevolved. Uh, doing your turn, do any damage. Down to your leader, to the enemy leader, and said, "Holy cow!" And then, and then it just ma maintains it. So I'm just gonna show you. I I holy cow there, but I'm just gonna show you why I holy cow. I'm guessing this does damage to the opponent instead of you, right? So it's still two damage to the opponent. This guy's doing two damage to the opponent, and it's gonna storm him. 
this guy is gonna do three damage to an enemy and it's gonna deal an additional two more right so it's gonna do two to the hero and then three to whatever you wanna hit it deal two damage to your enemy draw two cards deal two damage to the enemy leader and I guess you get the gist right but that's those are not like really common cards other with Deal 6 damage to your enemy leader. Holy cow, how is that? Deal X. X is half, right? Do half the damage that you would take to yourself to the enemy leader. Is that like a. So this is a 5 cost. So on turn 9, you can cut your opponent's life in half. You actually run that combo. This card seems really, really powerful. So yeah, I think it's a top tier card. Both in constructed and. Uh, take two like it's 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 ability just negates blood crafts main weakness right which is I have to injure myself to get to a really powerful late game. This one like around the mid game totally negates that ability, right? So it almost has a ward on it because like they can't afford you to like start spamming things like die bonds. Like imagine you double die bond the next turn, <laughs> just like. 12 damage to your opponent and he's not gonna heal so pretty insane card definitely pick that card like we have Fania Vampire, Vampire Princess this is like the new hero skin right uh, 2 2 2 that's fine 2 4 4 that's average uh, whenever an allied forest bat comes into play do one damage to the enemy leader you all summon a forest bat and then it does that as well so it's a really interesting card I'm not sure if it seems to fit like a more aggressive style, which is questionable in uh, Bloodcraft because I actually never liked aggressive Bloodcraft lists. I just don't think it's as powerful as people think they are. Uh, because you, do, you just deal so much damage to yourself while trying to do damage to them that uh, odds are they can just kill you outright faster. Because I'm sure this card is like doing damage to yourself and like to the enemy. In Bloodcraft, right? In the aggressive list, you do damage to yourself, you do damage to your enemy. It's almost like an even kind of damaging race, right? But then your opponent is gonna attack you as well, so there's more damage coming your way. So I never liked the aggressive list, um, and I don't think this card is gonna be aggressive decks a thing. And this just is not suitable in control style unless you make like a force bad control style, which I know some people have been trying, but I'm not convinced it's better than regular control style. In take two, I don't think this is a good card idea uh, either. So no, there you go. <laughs> All right, but look at me. If this is deal damage to enemy, then it's fine. But enemy leaders, I think it's pretty bad. Next we have uh, Vampire Fortress, which is I can't tell if it's like a uh, amulet or not. I'm guessing it's an amulet, anyways. At the end of your turn, so in the forest bed, okay, like forest bed is in play. Okay, that's, that's okay. I'm, so that means it's probably an amulet. Um, there are five cards in your area. Destroy this amulet and do X damage to the enemy leader. X equals to okay. This seems to be like pushing some kind of forest bed aggro style. If that's the case, then this card might not be too terrible. We need to see how well forest beds uh do right now. Two plus amulet is pretty cheap, so you could fill up the board relatively quick, uh, quickly here and do like what four damage. I'm not sure if it summons the forest bed before destroying it, uh, or rather after after it destroys itself. So depending on that, you can do up to four or five, right? That's not terrible actually. Like this is one of this is definitely a push in the right direction for this kind of style, especially with this part. Like they have such uh like positive synergy with each other at such low, low cost that it could push a new archetype i think so yeah pretty good card in it take two though I, I think this is yeah it's hard to get for it's not as easy as you would think to get for us but so yeah probably bad choice in take two but in constructed you know who knows all right now we move on to haven craft here we have the uh three cost I'm guessing it's the amulet as well. Whenever your leader's defense is restored, give plus one to all allied followers. Holy cow! 
one of the things that throws me off here is that I don't think there are that many I'm just gonna verify this because I don't want to be one of those guys that makes the videos and not have any back like thing to back up here uh, oh, yeah, this is hero so that doesn't count what is a healing card here? Sister Initiation is not a healing card. Oh, do I have a 3 cost? No, it's all okay. So I'm just gonna look through quickly here. Is this a healing card? No, that's an ally as well. So I guess it. No. Uh, I don't think there's enough heals to warrant playing that, which is the problem here. <coughs> like, if you said. Uh, this. Whatever. A defense is restored, sure that's great, but a leader's defense may not be as easy to do as one thing. So I think this card is just like uh really average at best. Uh it is really good in take two though, where buffing abilities are huge. Uh especially if you can draft like creatures that are just big just really big creatures as opposed to like smaller creatures with abilities. This card is gonna like be really swingy so I really like this card actually in take 2 but um, look it's not a top tier take 2 card but it's definitely not something that you should just glance over right it's it's like B grade at the very least so yeah that's my thoughts on that moving on we have the sludge hammer exorcist so type one of the most badass titles I guess names uh, 3 2 3 that's a fine, doesn't do anything. Evolve, destroy an enemy for what? It, it just destroys it outright, holy cow. And that's a really interesting one. And it's gonna run into a guy, so this looks like. Uh, I don't I don't think it's great. It's alright in take 2, but in Constructor, I think it's not great, so it's probably just a bad card overall. It's really interesting that it says uh, destroy. I get it that you take the sludge hammer and it smashes the guy and it's destroyed as opposed to banish, but I would like to see it just say banish more because I think this need to differentiate from others here. Right, so we don't have the classes, but it looks of it. We're moving on to the neutrals. So we have the first neutral legendary, nine cost dark angel on left here. Shorter hand when it evolves, a couple more like, animations, whatnot. Um, 944, that's horrendous. 966, still horrendous. Pen pen, increase your evolve points to 3. Huh. Yeah, the question is whether it does that if you have no more evolve points as well, right? Because if you go second, you use 3 evolve points, you have 3 evolve points, and then you play this, then it doesn't do anything if it doesn't restore, right? Um, this is one of those cards that is pretty interesting because like it kind of incentivizes this evolve theme that seems to be appearing in uh, all the decks. Like it lets you do more with evolve, which I think is actually really really good. Um, evolve is probably the best mechanic in the game that makes it unique to other card games I've played. And um, the only thing I, that really upset me about it is that you don't have too many uh, options for evolve. If this restores it, I think it's pretty good. Um, especially if you're going first and then you can you know get more evolves, why not, right? Um, the question is whether the baseline is too small. And to to get three evolve points, if it's again like I said, if it tops up, like you use three, it restores three, you use two, it gives you three more, then it's really really powerful. Uh, if not it's just really really bad, right? Because this only helps the player going first. I like it. I think it's really powerful. I don't think it'd be a top tier pick in take two, but it seems really powerful in constructor. Like where you, where there are some decks like Dragoncraft that really struggle because if you go first and you have two evolves, and then the question is what what do you evolve? Right, you you tend to save it for Dragon Warrior, and this basically gives you more flexibility to like have more options. Dragon Warrior is great, but if you can evolve more times, then it's even better. Um, I don't know. It only seems like you'll fit in Dragon Craft. Because that's the only deck, like in my head, that I think that, okay, I need more evolves. 
or any, any other class like two or three seems good enough. So this obviously is, is a deal breaker in the mirror matchups, but um, yeah, it, it's a really powerful card. But I just want to say it's another one of those new baits where it looks a lot more powerful than it is. Then again, it could be a new bait or it could be like one of the sleeper cards where it could just be like meta defining, like every deck runs it. If this ability be tops up, like I said, it might, then yes, it's probably meta defining and you'll see it in every deck. To which then, yes, it'll be a sleeper card. Otherwise, I think it's just average if it's not, right? So, really, really interesting card. I'm glad they're doing more of Evolve. I think they should uh, like print up more cards like this. Not, not maybe to this extent, but like, um, maybe something a little more outlandish, like, oh, your opponent can't evolve this turn or something like that. You know what I mean? The next turn or something like that. I think they should play around this evolve more. I'm glad they made a card like this. This card seems like it might just be absolutely broken though. Alright, next we have Odin. I don't recall Odin being so dark and grim, but okay, sure. It costs four three. Holy shit, that's bad. Uh becomes a six five, that's also really bad. Fan pair banish and enemy follower amulet. Okay, this card is pretty good. <laughs> Like, it's a really weird thing to say, because like, the stats are so horrendous on this guy. Which makes no sense, because Odin, Odin is like the Allfather, right? The, the king of the gods in uh, Norse mythology. But anyways, ban like, this is the kind of cards I want to see, like a neutral banishing. The thing that really annoyed me with uh, this game, don't get me wrong, I love this game, but the thing that really bothers me is a card like Mordecai exists in a game where banishing is really hard and transformations don't exist in too many classes, right? That's the reason why uh, Shadowcraft is top tier. I'm sure, I mean, sure Necromancy is a big part of it, but Mordecai is unstoppable in uh, Intake 2. And this is actually a pretty good, solid way to deal with cards. Like this actually addresses a few decks, in my opinion. Not just uh, mid-range uh, Shadowcraft of Mordecai. Because most of the time, people would just are like, Oh, you can forget about mid-range Shadowcraft because Mordecai doesn't come out all the time. Sure, when it comes out, it's like, okay, this game is over. But um, this changes that because it's a neutral legendary. So I really, really like this card. I wish they had more. Uh, banished cards that didn't come in the form of ridiculously understated creatures, but this is probably a step in the right direction. I really like this card. This is probably a top tier in uh, take two as well because I believe the body is big enough to trade for at least one minion or follower, and uh, the banishing makes it like a two for one. So, really good card. I like it. Alright, next we have Archangel Rihanna. Lovely name, lovely lady. Uh, 855 five, was mega on the standard. Again, this one doesn't uh, gain stats on the evolves. So the evolve ability is evolve or add followers. Evolve abilities were not activate for those followers. Holy shit. What? Okay, this card seems really insane, right? Like, there's obviously synergies between this one and, like, uh, what's it called? The Dark Angel Olivia. So, Olivia and Rihanna have synergies, but not just that, right? The point is that if it evolves, I'm guessing this doesn't require evolve points to evolve. Uh, because it doesn't say so, right? If that's the case, then this guy basically lets you get bigger, bust up your entire board and lets them trade if they can't attack this turn for whatever reason. Ah, oh, excuse me. I, I have I have like a, a Pepsi over here so I'm a bit gassed up. Anyways, this seems like this seems really powerful. Maybe even broken here. I'm not really sure if it's gonna qualify as that. Because the one thing about if off in this game which is Really, which is something I really like, is that you can't smoke face. So this basically helps you trade up or down or whatever it is, right? It basically helps you trade. 
Um, and the fact that this lets your whole board trade with his whole board, I think it's a pretty huge deal. Uh, evolve creatures just trade well in general, so uh, if you have a whole board that trading evenly with your opponent's board and then you play this, like it wins so hard, right? This is like one of those cards that again looks like it's meant for that mirror swordcraft thing I was talking about where it's like you go second you just can't ever seem to catch up with the board. This way you can and I think uh, this is a really nice way to play with evolve as well. Like just give him mass evolves. Um, again all this is just based on the assumption that it doesn't take up your play points. If even if it even if it does, I think it's not too terrible depending on your board state, but it goes from being broken to being okay, right? If that's the case. I really like this card. I think it's one of the top tier cards. Alright, next we have the Unicorn Dancer Unica. Say that real fast 10 times. Um, 2 2 2, fine, 2 4 4, fine. Uh, at the start of your turn, we saw 2 defense to your leader. Well, wow, that's pretty cool. I like it. It's a great card, actually. I, I see this being like in practically every card that isn't sword card, right? Like, this is good enough to run in every card. Because it kind of has like a pseudo ward on it. Like early game, they try to smoke you and they just keep hitting for two. Uh, like Swordcraft is not going to get you too low with this card in play, so they have to trade. Which is something that Swordcraft generally doesn't want to do with uh, bigger minions, so they want to keep running all their smaller minions in. And this is early enough that they want to keep trading the smaller, so they're not getting any damage in. I really like this card. I think this is a really good card. Alright, so now we're going into the uh, class spawning ones. So yeah, I guess that'll be all for my video guys. I know it's been a really long one today, but uh, I just want to give my two cents on Darkness Evolve. Obviously, if they're really small cards, I'll do the review for the other cards, but um, and I only do it if it's on this website. So I'm going to put the link in this website. You guys do feel free to comment and give your two cents if you think I'm too far off uh, on um, any of these reviews. And um, I know what, I'll see you guys on stream. I really appreciate you guys, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. This is JP signing up.